Good morning. good morning. It is really good to be back. I had a, was on a plane until 9.30 last night, um, and I am on West Coast time, so we'll see how this goes this morning. And when I landed last night, I got a message from Dr. J that he had a fever. So we have been madly putting uh, a different service together this morning with some videos. Um, and we all wish him well. Welcome to those of you at home, um, on Zoom or on Facebook, or who may be watching us later on. Um, I wanted to tell you um, today is a multi-gen service so that the children will be with us throughout the service. We will be celebrating Hanukkah, which begins this evening at sundown and the solstice, which happens on Tuesday. And then there's that other holiday coming this week. Christmas very soon um, and so I just want to tell you uh, remind you that Christmas Eve is a little different this year we're doing a part one and part two in a single session so at four o'clock the religious education program is going to bring us your traditional Christmas pageant with an intergenerational string quartet There'll be a break at around 4.30 for cookies, and we are replacing Alice Link's punch, because nobody knows what it was, with eggnog this year. And so that will be from 4.30 to 5 o'clock in the social hall. Please don't forget mitten scarves or hats for our mitten tree. And then we will hear a trumpet at 5, calling us back into the main hall um, for a, a more traditional Christmas Eve service. We still need volunteers to help us set up for that social hour between 4.30 and 5, as well as people to clean up the service afterward. My one other thing that I want to just tell you is that we are we're going to be doing a special winter solstice activity today. We are not going to be doing candle lighting, but if you have a joy or a concern during that time, bring it forward to Lee, our worship associate, and um, he'll collect it from you, and I will still get to share your joys and concerns aloud. Um, our opening words this morning are on the solstice, and they'll be read to us by Charlotte Storm. 
Thank you, Charlotte. Perhaps for a moment, the typewriters will stop clicking, the wheels stop rolling, the computers desist from computing, and a hush will fall over the city. For an instant, in the stillness, the chiming of the celestial spheres will be heard as earth hangs poised in the crystalline darkness and then gracefully tilts. Let there be a season when holiness is heard and the splendor of living is revealed. Stunned to stillness by beauty, we remember who we are and why we are here. There are inexplicable mysteries. We are not alone. In the universe, there moves a wild one whose gestures alter Earth's axis towards love. In the immense darkness, everything spins with joy. The cosmos enfolds us. We are caught in a web of stars, cradled in a swaying embrace, rocked by the holy night, babes of the universe. Let this be the time we wake to life, like spring wakes in the moment of winter solstice. Now is the time for lighting the chalice, the symbol of our faith. May I remind those watching at home to light your chalices as well. I would like to invite my friend and one of the newest fellowship members, Andrea Costa, to come up and join us for this chalice lighting. Part of the reading for this lighting comes from the Reverend Kristen Schmidt of the UU Church of Silver Springs, Maryland. We celebrate the coming of the winter solstice and its accompanying holidays. Holidays that let in the light with the arrival of winter's dark sky. With these holidays, communities around the world look to the miracle of light as a sign of rebirth and as a source of hope. We light this chalice for the many who came before us and for the fire of commitment that was in them. For everything, there is a season, and no season lasts forever. In these days of growing shadow, may we accept the gift of darkness and follow where the stars are calling us. Tonight begins the Jewish Festival of Lights. Let this rekindle in us the love of freedom and culture and gratitude for miracles, both big and small. We celebrate the promise of a new life and recommit ourselves to the protection of everyone's right to their own radiant humanity. Good morning to all. My name is Lee Kerfist and my pronouns are he and him. Welcome to the Unitarian Universalist Fellowship of Huntington and our dual platform. It is good to be together today. Today's service will focus on letting in the light of the joyous holidays during winter's darker days. If you are new to our congregation and wish to speak with someone to learn more about us, please contact us by email at office at uufh.org. Know that whoever you are, whomever you love, and wherever you are on your life's journey, you are welcome here. And here are some brief announcements. Our traditional uh, mitten tree will be at the Christmas Eve service. We will collect mittens and hats, gloves and scarves for both children and adults. So please donate as you are able. These articles will be distributed to the Family Service League, and please note the tree will be in the social hall this year. For all of you very talented people out there yearning for your chance to perform, your moment of stardom has arrived. On Saturday, January the 21st, 2023, from 7.30 to 9 p.m., we will host UUFH Has Talent. So you can sing, play an instrument, read poetry, juggle, perform a skit, do a monologue, whatever your entertainment skills may be. Uh, I would ask you to please contact Dr. J at 
music at uufh.org by January the 6th for whatever your ideas are or if you need any musical accompaniment. And please note, your entry performance has to be four minutes or less. And lastly, our little red wagon by the coat room is awaiting your food donations. This can include non-perishable items such as soup, pasta, sauces, cereals, canned fruits, canned vegetables, and all donated items will go to the Huntington Food Bank. So if there are any questions, please contact Bill Hawkins, who coordinates the Hungry Basket. And now, I would like to invite all of our middle schoolers to come up and have a seat on the chancel steps, and they will tell us about their bake sale and the charities that it serves. Good morning. We're students in the UUFH middle school class. Last year, we had a successful bake sale and raised $430 for organization Team C's to help get garbage out of the ocean. You were so generous in helping us that we decided to have another fundraiser this year. It wasn't easy to choose a cause because there are so many that need our support, but we learned about problems in Ukraine and Syria that are making it hard for families to have a warm place to get a warm place to stay or get warm this winter. We want to do our part to help them. First, we want to help Ukraine keep its freedom. Russia is bombing their electricity and heating stations, homes, and hospitals. With your help, we can donate money to provide comfort kits for families in Ukraine. $36 buys kits with blankets for two children. $60 gives a whole family an emergency kit. Every dollar will also be matched by the International Rescue Committee. Please help us help Ukraine. We also want to send money to Oxfam International. They help fight poverty around the world. The money we are raising for Oxfam will be donated to their Syria fund to help families who have had to leave their homes because of war there. They are now living in other places as refugees to try to be safe. Six dollars will buy them 10 bars of soap. Twenty dollars will give them water containers so they can carry clean water to drink and bathe with. And forty dollars will buy them warm blankets. Please help us raise money for these families today. As you use, we believe that all people are important. We care for all people and want to build a fair and peaceful world. Let's spread some joy to families around the world who need our help this holiday season. Buy our brownies, cookies, and more in the social hall after this service. And now please join us in singing of our affirmation. The words are on the screen. Good morning, everyone. I'm Danielle Burby. I'm the director of religious education here, and my pronouns are she, her. So today we will be talking about winter solstice, which there is an event on Wednesday, a labyrinth walk here, so um, to celebrate winter solstice starting at 7 p.m. So solstice is coming. We're not quite there yet, but winter solstice is coming. Imagine that you lived thousands of years ago, before laptops and iPads, before flushing toilets and running sinks, before even electricity. When it was dark outside, the only way to see was to light a fire. Imagine you didn't know the science behind the Earth's turning 
as winter crept in and the nights grew longer and the earth stopped growing crops, you might be afraid it would last forever. I know sometimes when we're coming home from work and school in the dark, it feels like forever. But imagine for a moment, you didn't know if it actually was forever. How scary would that be? Winter solstice marks the longest night of the year, the longest stretch of darkness. And slowly but surely, as the nights pass, after solstice, the days will begin to get longer. Imagine the miracle that that is, the celebration it deserves. So solstice and Christmas take place at similar times of year. That's not an accident. Historically, pagans were trying, well, Christians were trying to have pagans come over to Christianity. And because solstice was such an important celebration, they decided, OK, that is when we are going to celebrate the birth of Christ. So the Christmas tree is originally a pagan tradition. The Yule log is part of solstice, so is mistletoe. Many of the traditions that we associate with Christmas are actually, they originate with winter solstice celebrations with Yule. Even Santa was working his magic long before the birth of Jesus. He's had different names over the years, but he's been around for a very long time before he decided to celebrate Christmas with us. And while the star on the tree represents the star of Bethlehem, you can also interpret it, interpret it as a representation of our sun. Because of the long nights, this holiday symbolically represents what in I also work in the book world. So in the book world, we call the dark night of the soul in a story, right before everything turns around. Spiritually, it's time to honor both the light and the darkness that reside within each of us. So some ways that if you want to celebrate Yule or winter solstice, you might want to Try a fire gazing meditation so you can light a candle and just look into the flame. Or you might want to deep clean your house to welcome in the sun and brighter energies. So we will now, another traditional way to celebrate solstice, which we cannot participate in today because it involves fire, is, <laughs> is to burn things that you don't want to bring with you into the next phase of the sun. Well, we cannot use fire, but we can still use the intention behind that. So we will now partake in this solstice, um, I'll call it a ritual, this solstice ritual. So um, we, I have bowls of water and salt up in the front and in the back. This is going to take the place of the candle lighting today. Salt is spiritually sometimes considered to have protective and purifying properties, um, and that in this will represent the earth. Candles represent air and fire, and then we also have water. So the salt will dissolve in the water when you put it into it. The idea behind this is that as you come up, you consider what is something you would like to let go of, and take a spoonful of the salt and put it in the water. And then as you walk back to your seat, consider what is something that you would like to embrace. And if you do have a written joy or concern, this is also your moment to give that to Lee, who's behind me. So I would like to invite Lily up. Thank you, Lily. Lily is going to help me out with this. The wheel of the year has turned once more. 
and the nights have grown longer and colder. Tonight, the darkness begins to retreat and light begins its return once again. As the wheel continues to spin, the sun returns to us once more. Even in the darkest hours, even in the longest nights, the spark of life lingered on, laying dormant, waiting, ready to return when the time was right. The darkness will leave us now as the sun begins its journey home. As the wheel turns, light returns. The light of the sun has returned to us, bringing life and warmth with it. The shadows will vanish and life will continue. We are blessed by the light of the sun. So now, as you take a moment to think of something you want to let go of and something that you would like to welcome in, I invite you up to take a spoonful of the salt and put it in the water. And now, as I say this poem, you, there is a responsive part. So when I go like this, you will say, the light is reborn. In the greatest darkness, the light is out of winter's cold, the light is from our deepest fears, the light is when we most despair, when all seems lost, the light is reborn. when the earth lies waste, the light is when animals hide, the light is 
When the leaves are gone, the light when the ground is hard, the light warmth will come again. The light Summer will be here once more. The light Plants will grow again. The light Life will continue. The light Thank you. Thank you, Danielle. Don't you all feel lighter? It's good to let go. I have a joy here for my children. Those are not my children, but somebody's children. Um, and I, for all of our children who are here, we're so glad to see you this morning. Um, and I ask for your prayers and good thoughts to Dr. J, because we need him here Christmas Eve. So. Uh, <laughs> and may he feel better. Please join me in a few quiet moments of meditation um, or if you prefer prayer. As the days grow even shorter, our thoughts turn to darkness, perhaps to bleakness. We know among us are those who suffer during this time of the season, for whom the Christmas holidays are not necessarily a time of joy, but a time of hard memories. <laughs> We think about those who struggle as it gets colder, who need food, who need shelter, who need kindness. We think about our own despair when we allow fear to cloud our hearts, worries, anxieties. We know among us are those who struggle with health issues, job issues, financial issues, relationship issues. As the earth turns, we all hope for more light, for the days to grow longer once again, for our burdens to be eased and let go just as the salt dissolves in the water. We celebrate with those who celebrate new love, new opportunities, good health, time to get together with family, time to celebrate. We ask for the light to return, the light externally, but also the light inside us. May we feel that light right now, deep inside us. May that light grow and fill our bodies, our chest. May it go from our bodies into this room. From this room, let us bring our light into the world. May there always be light. Amen.
As you can see, this month's split plate donation is for the Hi Hi Project. The Family Service League is a social service agency that su provides support and security to our Long Island neighbors who need it most. And some of these services include addiction services and treatment, mental health and caregiver services, trauma and crisis counseling, and of course, service for the homeless. The Huntington Interfaith Homeless Initiative, or Hi Hi, is an arm of the Family Service League. It offers homeless individuals in Huntington a safe and warm place to spend the night during the winter months. Hi Hi is composed of more than 35 local congregations, including ours, and provides housing, clothing, and meals to its participants. This year, the UUFH will be supporting Hi Hi by making dinners and delivering them to the host sites. You can personally support Hi Hi in three ways. One, making and delivering the dinners. Two, donating gift cards from various local restaurant chains. And three, donating needed items of food, clothing, toiletries, and other supplies by placing them in the Hi Hi bin that's located in the lobby in front of the coat room. And this will be throughout the winter. If you are interested in participating more directly, see the Hi Hi link on our website, uufh.org, or contact Melissa Dinsman for more information. And please give as generously as you are able. And now let's enjoy Adam Sandler. <laughs> Everybody. We're gonna we're gonna sing a song right now that you you might know the words too. So if you want to sing along, that would be fun. Here we go. Sam. Not a two, <laughs> but guess who is Hall of Famer Rod Guru? He can burn it. We got Ann Landers and her sister here, Abby. Harrison Ford is a quarter Jewish. Not too shabby. Some people think that Ebenezer Scrooge is well.
Dr. J was going to play O Come Ye Emmanuel for that part. So. I would like to invite the children who are under the age of 13 to come forward because Hanukkah is primarily a children's story. Hi, you all. Wait, no baby Jane? Oh, there she is. Come on up, y'all. So one of the controversial things is how do you spell Hanukkah? So this is my preferred spelling. You can spell it with an H. Sometimes somebody once said there are at least eight spellings, one for each night. So this story took place 2,100 years ago. That's a really long time. And Hanukkah has been celebrated pretty consistently ever since. So I'm going to ask you, all of you now to shut your eyes for a minute. And I want you to think about what if you had come into UUFH this morning and all of the chairs were knocked over and our chalice was on the floor and that instead of this being our chancel where you're sitting, there was a big statue of a man you never knew before. But you were told you had to worship. That means you had to give thanks to that statue of that man. And there were pigs wandering around the church. And then you were told you could no longer say our affirmation. We couldn't say it, no more. So open your eyes. And I want to hear, how would you feel? Raise your hand if you could tell me how you would feel if you came in that morning and that would have happened. Surprise. Surprise. Disrespected. Disrespected. Yes. Confused. Confused. Like, what happened? With? Mm. How would you feel? How would you feel? <laughs> okay, anybody over here? How do you think you feel? Everything was like all a mess and... and we couldn't say what our affirmation, and we couldn't be Unitarian Universalists anymore. How would we feel? How do you think you'd feel? Um, disappointed. Maybe. Disappointed, yeah. Anybody think you might be mad? Yes. Yeah, right? Pretty mad. So that's what happened to the Jewish people a long time ago. They had a temple in Jerusalem. There was a Greek king who came into power. His name was Antiochus. And he took over the one Jewish temple. He erected a statue of Zeus. He told people they had to worship Zeus. They let the pigs inside the temple. And they told the Jewish people they couldn't say their prayers. Unknown color. Together, there was a man, that kind of is what happened. There was, so, there was a man named Mattathias. And he came to the temple that day. And he got so angry, he killed a man. And so he had to flee. And when he fleed, he and his sons put together a band of rebels to resist the king. And that little band grew to 6,000 people. And they, in three years, were able to take over Jerusalem and get back the temple. So three years from the day that Zeus was erected, on what's now called the 25th of Kislev, which is actually starts tonight, Judas Maccabee rededicated and purified the temple in an eight-day celebration. Hanukkah has been celebrated consistently ever since. But then there was another story. Do any of you know the other story about the light? You do. Okay, Ellie, a few of you. Okay. Um, inside the temple, there was a holy light. And they had to light this light with special oil. And the, the Greeks had really ruined the temple, so they couldn't 
find any oil, and it had to be special purified oil, and they found a little tiny jar with enough to light the lamp for one day. It takes eight days to make oil from an olive tree. Did you know that? So you did know that, great. So that was part of the miracle, was that they only had enough oil for one day, and it was gonna take them eight to make the new special oil. But they lit it anyway, and then the miracle happened. Who knows what the miracle was? Okay. It lasted all the eight nights. It lasted. The miracle lasted all eight nights until the new oil was available. So over here, if you guys turn, you all turn around. And Ellie, why don't you come up here with me? This candelabra is called a menorah. It has eight candles plus one taller candle. That tall, do any of you know what the name of that taller candle is? Okay. It's the shamus, the shamus candle. And so we take the shamus candle and we're gonna light it, but not till we say the prayers, okay? So there are, there are three prayers that we say on the first night of Hanukkah. This isn't really night, and I have to tell you, among the Jewish ministers on Facebook, we've been fighting all week about whether we can do what I'm about to do. <laughs> so about half of the Jewish ministers were like, no, you can't light the menorah during Sunday morning because the menorah shouldn't be lit till sundown. So I'm gonna tell you it's sundown someplace. <laughs> I thought we should light the menorah um, tonight because we won't have another chance uh, um, uh, to light this. So if you would join me, those of you who know it, and Lee, I know you know it, so why don't you come up? We're going to say it first in Hebrew, and uh, we'll say the first prayer in Hebrew and then in English, then we'll say the second prayer in English, and then I will tell you to light the shamas and light the first candle. So if you would join me in Borakata Adonai, Eloheinu melech alam, asher kiddushanu b'mitzvosav vitzivanu lahalik ner shel Hanukkah. And that means, blessed are you, Lord our God, ruler of the universe, who has sanctified us with their commandments and commanded us to kindle the Hanukkah light. And the second prayer is, Blessed are you, our Lord, our God, ruler of the universe, who performed miracles for our ancestors in those days at this time. So we take the shamas and we light the candles from left to right. And each night, is that working? <laughs> no. Okay. And then we put, and we light that. These are fancy new candles. Great. And then we put the shamas back in the middle. And then tonight, those of us who are Jewish will say a prayer called the Shekianu, which will be thanking us for bringing us to this time and this season once again. So thank you. You all can go back to your seats. And it is now my distinct pleasure to bring up the choir singing a cappella for us, and they asked me to ask for your forbearance. I'm sure you guys are going to knock it out of the park. The word. The Thank you. 
at the end of choir pieces, but you all deserve that clap. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you. It was lovely. For the Unitarian Universalist minister, December represents a special dilemma. Hanukkah starts tonight. Today is the fourth Sunday of Advent. Tuesday is the winter solstice. Christmas Eve and Christmas follow. And then comes Kwanzaa. There is a lot to celebrate when we are a faith that connects to multiple sources of wisdom. There are connections between Hanukkah, Solstice, and Christmas that are historical, cultural, and grounded in the natural world. As Danielle told you, Earth-centered religions have celebrated the winter solstice for millennia. It's the longest night and the shortest day of the year, and our ancestors created the holiday as a promise to people that the light would return. I think today the solstice calls us to take some moments before next week's Christmas festivities to ponder our place in the larger scheme of things. Solstice reminds us to honor the rhythm of our days and that the earth turns without us. Solstice is the direct descendant of Christmas. Danielle told you a little bit about this, but how clever, or was it manipulative, that the early Christians decided to co-opt the solstice to recruit pagan converts to celebrate Jesus' birth. So just think for a minute. Does anyone know the day Jesus was born? No. How could they, right? Of course not. So just prior to Constantine's rule in 325, December 25th was declared the birth of the unconquered sun, spelled S-U-N. The Romans celebrated Saturnalia that week, including the solstice, and paid homage to Mithra, the ancient Persian god of light. 
So here we are after 325, Council of Nicaea. The Christian rulers want December 25th back. And so they declare it as Jesus's birthday, quite literally the birth of the unconquered son, spelled S-O-N. Pretty clever. And they added Christian meanings to the existing, existing traditions. So holly, ivy, ivy, mistletoe, the yule log, wreaths, evergreens were all part of pagan festivities and continued to be used today. So I want you to know that these wreaths that I thought would look so pretty back here, those are pagan symbols, in case any of you are uncomfortable with them. What was interesting is it took a really long time for Christmas Day to catch on. It wasn't celebrated in Jerusalem until the 7th century, and it wasn't celebrated in Europe until the 11th. In 1647, the English Parliament abolished Christmas, and the Puritans, when they came to America, didn't celebrate Christmas at all. It was not until 1870 just 150 years ago that Christmas became a federal holiday. So take that, you war on Christmas people. <laughs> Those of you who are newer to Unitarian Universalism may not know what an important role the Unitarians played in bringing Christmas to America. You may not know, but it was in the 1800s that the Unitarians and the Episcopalians began to celebrate Christmas. Um, no other of the Protestant religions did. Unitarian minister, the Reverend Charles Fallon, brought the first Christmas tree into a house and into a congregation in Lexington, Massachusetts, and it caught on with his congregation and it started to spread to other people. Did you know that Unitarian ministers wrote jingle bells? And, right, that's ours. And it came upon a midnight clear. And Charles Dickens, of a Christmas Carol fame, Charles Dickens was a Unitarian. So we get a lot of credit for this holiday. Hanukkah is actually a minor Jewish religious holiday. An article I clipped about 10 years ago from the New York Times says, quote, Hanukkah never inspired any ballet or films. There is no miracle on Hester Street. No Radio City Hanukkah Spectacular. Jewish songwriters have been more inclined to compose Christmas songs, including White Christmas, Chestnuts Roasting on an Open Fire, and We Need a Little Christmas were all written by American Jews. No one ever wrote White Hanukkah or We Need a Little Hanukkah, just this very moment. <laughs> But why Hanukkah is important is it is the first recorded battle ever for religious freedom and against efforts to have a minority religion assimilated into a larger whole. Reason enough, right, for us as Unitarians to want to celebrate it. But it's that legend that grew up in the second century where we can find, I think, the inspiration. So we heard the legend, the light that lasted for eight nights. The rabbis who wrote the Talmud took a story from this heroic military battle and made it into a story of God's miracle and grace to the Jewish people. They moved it from a story based on facts. I mean, we don't really know, right? Did that light last eight days? But to a story based on the universal need for faith and hope and redemption. And that's where the stories overlap, right? Christmas, solstice, Hanukkah. They're all stories about hope and redemption. As I've shared with you many times before, you will remember me about this after I leave you in two years. These may not be true stories, but they are, they are truth stories. All three of these truth stories begin in the darkest of days. In a dark bear manger, a teenage girl and her boyfriend deliver a child, scared and cold and alone. In a temple but defiled by those who would deny anyone to have different religious beliefs without light. On a day when the sun appears to have disappeared forever. And we know that time, right? We have all lived through dark days. The promise, the promise of the December holidays 
These truth stories are the everyday miracles, the ones you can see and the ones you can't. The baby named Emmanuel, which means God is with us, the hope of every baby. The band of brothers that become an army of 6,000 and the drop of oil that lasts for eight days. The return of the sun after the darkest day of the year. The miracle of our families and our friends. The miracle that we are sitting here together once again. The miracle that we are alive at all. The miracles that happen right here each and every week in this congregation when we join our hearts and our voices together. These stories, Hanukkah, Solstice, Christmas, remind us that in the darkest of winters, in the physical world or in the dark days of our souls, the tiniest light with faith can become brighter and stronger until the whole world is filled with light again. And they remind us that every human being, no matter how humble their beginnings, can bless the world. May these last weeks of this holiday season, my friends, be such a blessing to you. So in that spirit, I'm going to invite the children, as well as any of you who read your flash and came in in a holiday sweater. See, Lisa, we know some people are reading. In that spirit, I invite you to come forward. There are musical instruments on both sides of the chancel, so grab a musical instrument or stay in your place, or sing loudly at home, this little light of mine. Um, we will be singing along to a children's choir from a Pentecostal evangelical megachurch. All right, come forward. And Sandra's going to take a few pictures for our video from this. Seriously, I need you up here with that musical instruments. We've got instruments right here. Hello, you covered this?
And don't forget, I invite, uh, can, can anyone hear me? Invite the entire congregation to greet Reverend Hafner at the rear of the worship hall. And for those of you to move into the social hall for a coffee and conversation. And for all here and all who are present at home, I wish you a wonderful rest of your day.